Hey, what's up? I'm here with John Snodgrass. How you doing, man? What's up, son? Thanks for coming in and <laughs> playing uh, some songs for us. Thanks for having me, Mike. Um, I think like the the most the thing that I get about you the most is that uh, you know, considering your music, uh, it seems like you're having a lot of fun doing what you're doing. I mean, so you have to. Yeah. So I mean, are you having fun? Is it? Is oh yeah. It, is it still fun to play music? Oh yeah. I mean, the word is play music. It's play. I play. Yeah. I play music. Is it hard to keep it fun? No. Nope. Always was. Uh, always fun. No, it's great to, uh, I mean, you know, I like playing with Drag the River, and then you know, I'm out with Joey, yep. and just different people, I play with a lot of different folks, so it keeps it interesting, and the more people you play with, you learn more stuff too, and that's fun. So, I guess for people that don't know your musical history, there's Drag the River, mm -hmm. and Armchair Martian. Correct. Um, so, talk a little bit about both those bands, what came first? I started Armchair Martian, and uh, I moved out to Colorado, and... 93 to begin, and uh, yeah, I just started that then. Met the dudes from The Descendants, and they recorded our first music in 94. So that band started in like, shoot, it was February of 94 that we recorded our first record, and it was October of 93 that I went there, so it was just cool. Yeah. I wrote all these songs. Hammer and no one bought those records, but they were fun. <laughs> we were playing music. <laughs> no, it was fun. I was 18, 19 or something. And then Drag the River? Drag the River, me and Chad met each other. Um, I guess that was, or well, we'd met each other then, but a couple years later we just started writing songs. So, for Drag the River. So it really all happened. It was symbiotic, it was happening at the same time. And then where did you picking up an acoustic come into it? Was that happening already? Yeah, that happened when I was like 15. And how did that you... guitar I played is the first and only Seriously? acoustic guitar I've ever had. That's awesome. Um, so, how did you end up playing guitar? I mean, did your parents, were your parents into it and they just, no, my friend Chad Brax, who's a great musician, you may know of too. And You've done songs with him? Yeah, oh, of course. And he uh, you know, just lived the neighborhood over. And yeah, we just made music, just picking up, you know, taught me how to play guitar. And so I, I, I started on the drums and I played the drums. For, really? Yeah. That's crazy. Drums are insane. I don't know. I could never play drums. I always played. thought I was pretty good. <laughs> no, then like as you play with you know more people and you play with people that are good, you're like, oh right. <laughs> I was like the best on my street, but I was the only one, <laughs> you know, on the street. And then you play with someone that actually knows how to make them sound. You're like, okay, right. <laughs> I, I want to focus on this guitar a little bit. Yeah. You know, that's, that's well, you're good at that, man. You got that down pat. I'm okay, but thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the type of music that you play, you know, how important for it is, is, or how important is it to you to be able to sort of just pick up your guitar and walk in anywhere and be able to play a song, you know? Because um, it's different when you have a band. You gotta, everybody's right. got to load in. And, oh, yeah. And the, this, the, oh, like, the thing I always said when Drag the River first started playing, because like the amps were smaller and we would just play acoustic guitar too. And it was like, just the load was easier. It was better. Like yeah. a load in. Yeah. Like no Marshall cabinets. No, yeah. None of that. That's no. just. Yeah. You know what's really heavy? Accordions. Accordions are crazy. Accordions heavy. are amazing though, because in the scope of things, you don't really have to bring a whole piano in. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Sort of guy. Or if amazing. you go for this yeah. little fisherman yeah. accordion, that's, <laughs> that's a good way to go. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, Tri State. It's uh, John Snodgrass and friends. Yeah. Who are your friends? Brandon Carlisle, who lives down the street from me, he's in a band called Teenage Wild Rocket, and he did drums on the song. Then I sent the music to Stefan from The Descendants, who plays guitar, yeah. but he played bass. Cool. So it's weird having this world-class guitar player just playing bass. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Though. It's got to be then, fun for him, though, right? Mm -hmm. Then I went to uh, Florida and recorded with Chris Wallage's new band, um, Chris Wallage's Hot Water Music. And He's got these friends called the Ship Thieves that are good friends of mine, and we did a tour together in Europe, Drag the River. So just friends. We went through Bad Cruise Natch, so I put that song on there. That was just a stop on the tour. <laughs> and the last song, Reggie, is for our tour manager. So it's kind of about this time, you know, that part of, of the of the seven, it's about a specific time. How They're all written in like about three months or two months. Well, how important is touring? I mean, you know, getting out there and playing the stuff all the time and and constantly traveling, how much does it affect your music? Well, touring, things evolve, you yeah. know, yeah, for sure. On acoustic music, it's pretty seamless because you already write a song and that's how you project and you, you know you can do it that way. And then when you try to play them in a rock setting, sometimes like, oh, 
I need to play this song, this in G and A, you know, because you know, give it a little more. So playing live, it's great to play live a lot before you ever record music, and I do it extremely one way or extremely the other, the other way too. It's good to kind of confuse yourself and trick yourself into making good things. Right Accidentally, things happen good. So, you know, I'm happy with all those songs that are on that seven inch. So that's good. There were three more, and they weren't good enough. So that's why it was a five song seven inch. Right on. Uh, all killer, no filler. Yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. Now you know, you, you've been you know the all country scene, you know now, and there's a lot of guys that you know, or in the punk scene that have picked up acoustic guitars, but you've been sort of doing it for a while, so I wondered, mm -hmm. you know, how do you feel about that? How do you, was it, were you wary about it, you know, making music now at all? Did it cross your mind? I don't know if people bring this up every once in a while, and I, I guess, yeah, it has gotten more popular. I, I don't really know what, it's just what I've always done. Yeah. And it's fun. So you must be stoked. And it's fun to do. I mean, I like water slides. I mean, everyone else should get on a water slide, too. <laughs> it's fun, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's fun. Yeah. But... Yeah, I mean, I like playing on the acoustic guitar and armchair Martian. I mean, it was, it's the same thing. It's the same songs. They're just louder, yeah. quieter. And you play those songs? I played one ar armchair song. It's funny, though, because that song actually is just on the piano. <laughs> so that's even a whole other thing. Yeah. You know? Um, now, <clears throat> you know, I guess, well, back to Tri State. Um, when is it going to come out? And, you know, seven inches and, and that whole thing, downloads and, you know, where the music industry's gone. Are, are you... It's coming in the mail to me to Montreal, and I'm getting it Friday. Sweet. I'm finally getting them, which means once they finally came in, just a lot of people are making, pressing vinyl now. Yeah. Which is great. Are you a vinyl guy? Of course, I always yeah. have been, and I've always pressed vinyl for every record I've ever done, but it used to be you just get a hold of them and they're like, yeah, let's make some records. <laughs> You know, and now you're like, stand in line, you're like, what, what about me when I, I've always been there for you. Vinyl <laughs> manufacturers, you know, but yeah. we had to wait, and it was just a little bit held back. It's fine. Um, so I think it'll be announced probably here in the, maybe today, I don't know. We'll find, we'll yeah. find out. Um, and I mean, are you all right with, you know, giving music away for free? Because you've given away stuff for free, right? Yeah. Do you uh, have to, you know? No. Uh, <laughs> I am doing this interesting thing though. Um, every Drag the River record, and I, I can't remember exactly how I worded it, but it'll be on our website and you and you can see it. I think it, I worded it pretty well. It's like now's your chance to have every Drag the River record for what you feel it's worth. And if you've gotten something before, for free, based on how much enjoyment you got out of it. But if for a very limited time, they're all going to be up there, and it all goes into our PayPal account, and we're going to use that money to make the next record. Cool. So if I get enough money for it in four days, that's done. If it's up for a month, then yeah. Cool. People being greedy. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, and you sing about that as well, greedy people. Do I? Yeah, you have. When? Uh, you're going to kill me on a song title here. Greedy? Uh, no. A song about envy. It's on your mind space. Oh, a song about envy. Yeah. Oh, well, that was me. That, okay, <laughs> right. That's a song I wrote, it's called Song for Gibson, and right. it's for my friend, and he had a kid, and I was saying that I was envious of him because his parents are so cool. Oh, okay. So, yeah, your dad's rad. Greed. Yeah. You know, yeah, your dad's rad. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that was funny. It's about greed and envy, but mine, and about a beautiful thing, like, I wish I could live here with you folks. <laughs> you know? I wish I was one, you know, <laughs> and growing up and... Yeah. I like it when, yeah, there's always those people that have amazing parents. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, they're the best. Um, you could meet them tonight, but, you know, you got to go boxing. Uh, yeah. Right. It's not okay. to put that on camera. People are going to think right. I actually box. <laughs> uh, I might want to go with you. Yeah, come on. Let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what are you listening to right now? What, what, are, you, what are you digging right oh, now? I'll it's, tell you what I'm listening to. I'm listening to, uh, it's a new 7-inch. It's a Lenny Lashley 7-inch. Mm -hmm. Do you know him? Uh, I've seen the name floating around. He had a band called he Lenny and the, the Piss Poor Boys. He was just out with the Street Dogs. Street Dogs, right, right, right. Dudes from the, the Murphy. His record's so good. Um, his other record was great. Drag the River covered one of his songs a long time ago. Uh, it's just a really good seven inch. Songs are good. Cool. Yeah. He was a man called Dark Buster, too, which I've never seen or heard, but I heard they're great. Um, and is he uh, along the lines of. Is he a country guy? Is he a no? He's a Boston folk guy. Guy. He's a boss, old old Boston punker guy. But he's been doing this. I mean, guys, that first record that was given to us, 
I think I got in 2003, maybe, or something. I don't know what you would call it. It's like pub songs, you know? Okay, cool. Yeah, acoustic. I mean, it's good. Did you? It's really good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, check him out. It's really good. Did you go? Uh, did you go punk first when you were growing up, or did you go country first, or what came first there? Well, when I was growing up, I listened to like Chris Christopherson and the Beatles, and and then yeah, I don't know where the punk music came in. I mean. I remember being in sixth grade, but but before I went into seventh grade, and I was literally, I mean, it sounds like I'm making up, but he was on the farm, but I was on the farm, you know, with my grandparents. <laughs> and I would pick up a radio station from Maryville, Missouri. It's called Static and Stereo. And uh, that was, what, 94, I mean, 84 or something. And uh, yeah, I heard a lot of rad stuff, you know, <laughs> Dead Kennedys, yeah. you know. There's, I mean, you, and I didn't know what that music was at all. That yeah. was amazing to me. It was weird. Is, is it, did you like, see this the is harder than the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this, this is, is much crazy. more angry. But I liked, you know, I remembered like when R.E.M. Leicester's pageant came out, and then I was listening to My War at the same time, and it was just this new music to me. I liked it all, and I still like the Beatles. Nice. Favorite and Christopher. Beatles, favorite Beatles record? That's really hard to say. It's a hard one, yeah. You know, um, I really do like Abbey Road, though. I mean, that's a good one to put on, and you get a lot of good stuff out of it. Just side two of Abbey Road with the whole medley. I mean, that's, yeah. that's worth it. That's pretty good. But I don't know. They're all really good. Is it cool to go to London when you're a Beatles guy, you know, play over there? Um, yeah, it's even cooler to go to Liverpool. Um, I don't know if you noticed my jacket, but I got a liver bird oh. on my jacket. Nice. We'll get a steal of that later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we've got a freeze frame. Yeah. We don't have a budget for that. Uh, dude, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Totally. Thanks. Explore music wears English laundry.